Cell Replication and Differentiation, Section 1. In replication and differentiation, we have two terms here that mean very different things. But they are related to each other. Let's take a look at an example. You started life as a single cell called a zygote. That cell replicated in a cell division called mitosis. Now we have two. Those two cells then each made another identical copy of themselves. So instead of two cells, there are now four. That process continued, but the cells began to differentiate to make different types of U cells. And now you have trillions of cells. So grab a picture of yourself or take one really quickly and post that picture here. Based on the story of you from one cell to trillions, what do you think is the meaning of replicate? No wrong answers here. What do you think is the meaning of differentiate? No wrong answers here. This is what you think. Make sure to add your answers, though, to these two along with the picture of yourself. When you're ready, you can unpause the video to continue. On the next slide, we have a video that is a fascinating video to watch. How does one cell become trillions? Many looking very different from each other, but all having the same DNA? Well, this video is going to show you that process in action. So go ahead and pause the video where you're listening to me and watch this video. And as you watch, make sure to answer the questions that you see on the slide. When you're done, come on back and we'll move to the next slide. On the next slide, we are going to begin to look at what replication means. But before we get to cell replication, you have to understand the replication of a chemical called DNA, which we've studied before quite a bit. DNA replication is the process cells use to copy the chromosomes in the nucleus to prepare to divide into two new but identical nuclei. So DNA replication, there's that word replication, is the process of making a copy. What is it making a copy of? It's making a copy of DNA. Why is it doing it? So that we can put that copy into the new cells. So here we have the original cell and the original DNA. It needs to make a copy. So it's going to have two Of the DNA. See, it had one, now it has two. Why did it do that? It did that so that each new cell, when it divides, has its own copy of the DNA. So the original cell made a copy, and then that original cell split in two, and each half had its own copy. That is the general overview of DNA replication. Now let's take a much closer look. Do you recognize this structure? This is a DNA ladder. When DNA replication happens, it's pretty straightforward. There's two basic steps. First, the original DNA is going to unzip. How does it do that? Well, if you pull this side, here we go. What we have done is broken the hydrogen bonds, which are weak bonds that were joining together the base pairs. What happens next? Each of these sides is now separate, and the cell has loose nucleotides, free nucleotides, that it is going to use to build a new side for each of these originals. I'm just going to skip this over a little bit more. There we go, to give us some room. How does it know what to put on the other side? Well, it uses complementary base pairing. G always pairs with C.
A always pairs with T. G always pairs with C. T always pairs with A. And you can see those hydrogen bonds joining the bases together. C with G. A with T. And T with A. I didn't line those up perfectly, but you get the idea. And remember that each of these bases has a sugar and phosphate attached. So they come with their own backbone. We have this other side. It still doesn't have a partner. And the cell is going to go through the same process to pair up bases using complementary base pairing. So if there's an A, it's going to pair it up with a T. C is going to be paired with G. And each of these came with its own sugar and phosphate, which helps form the new backbone. And so now we have these two DNA molecules, whereas before we had just one. And because of base pairing, they are identical in sequence. G-A-G, T-C-A, T. G-A-G, T-C-A, T. The other side is identical as well. So we have two identical copies of the DNA. And that is the basic process of DNA replication. We call DNA replication semi-conservative. That word semi means partway or partial. And the word conservative here means to save or to keep original. So it's only partly conservative. It only somewhat keeps the original. When the DNA splits, it uses loose nucleotides to form a new side for each of the originals, which means that the new DNA is half old and half new. Take a minute and use the colors red for the original, blue for the new, to explain how this DNA at the end is half old and half new. If you need help, you can pause this video while you do that and then check your answer by coming back here. Were you able to explain it? Here's my explanation. The original DNA is in red. It moves apart and the cell builds a new half for each original. The new DNA is in blue. The two copies at the end are each half old, red, and that is the conservative or conserved part and half new, blue. Let's see if you remember the steps of DNA replication. Drag these in order, and then check your answers here by unpausing the video. All right, let's see how you did. First, the DNA unzips by breaking those hydrogen bonds. Then the nucleotides get paired up with their complement to build the new half. And that allows the cell to divide and give an identical copy to each of the new cells. I hope this was helpful. I'll see you next time. Until then, have a great day.